So I have a treat for you today. You've heard me talk about this person many times. He's a staple and key leader of the GSOW project, our Dutch team leader, Leon. And don't be fooled by the title of him being the Dutch team leader. Leon has his fingers in so many pages, in so many languages, he's going to have to have another arm cloned on. Leon, tell me how to pronounce your name. Let's, let's, see, let's hear it. Leon Korteweg. <laughs> That's so wonderful. I am so glad you didn't make me say that. So, <laughs> where are you located at? Well, I uh, live in uh, Nijmegen in the Netherlands. And tell me a little bit about yourself. You're a student? Uh, I used to be a student. I uh, um, have uh, got my uh, Bachelor of Arts in History. Um, but right now I'm uh, looking for a job. Oh, okay. And so now you were already a Wikipedia editor and you wrote to me in May of 2013. You had found our project. How, how did you find our project? Yeah, I, I had been a Wikipedia editor ever since January 2008. Uh, but I found, uh, uh, because I was subscribed to the JREF uh, YouTube channel, I found a, a workshop video that you gave uh, and uh, I thought immediately, yes, I want to join this project and together change Wikipedia. And, and why did you think that, I mean, you were already an editor, so why did you want to join us? I mean, we're happy as heck that you're with us, but <laughs> what, why, you know, you didn't need to learn how to edit Wikipedia. So what is it that's different about being a part of this team than being a regular, just normal editor on Wikipedia? Well, you can achieve so much more, uh, also in uh, many different languages. You can translate each other's work. And uh, and I noticed that I had much experience I could be sharing with other people and they could share experience, uh, their experiences with me. And together we can uh, do so much more work. Uh, and it's not just, just counting it up. It, it's like uh, accelerating your, your work power. So it's so it's, it's and and yeah, the international uh, side of it's uh, um, talking with so many people in different languages. That's that's amazing. And how many languages do you actually speak? Because every time we turn around, it seems like you have another one. <laughs> well, um, I was taught six languages in grammar school. So that's Dutch, English, French, German. And Latin and ancient Greek, but I don't, <laughs> I don't speak the latter two of those. But uh, yeah, quite, quite oh some languages. <laughs> oh my gosh! Here in America, we're lucky if we can get people to get one language down. That English, <laughs> I, I'm, we're quite impressed. We are quite impressed. Trust me. So, um, I've just been telling everybody about our vaccination topic that we're, we're going to be doing, focusing on for the next six months. So can you tell me why you think that topic of vaccinations is, a, is an important focus for GSOW to be working on? Well, because it uh, does a lot of harm. It can do a lot of harm if you don't vaccinate uh, your children or yourself, uh, if you've never been vaccinated yourself as a child. Um, because uh, some diseases we thought were uh, extinct can come back, uh, especially when uh, uh, people no longer vaccinate their children. Um, and we had a measles outbreak in 2013 in the Netherlands, uh, especially in those areas where uh, children are not properly vaccinated, um, and it mainly concerns conservative Protestant children or uh, children of... Uh, 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 anthroposophical parents or uh, sometimes uh, children of uh, homeopathy uh, users and um, we had uh, it, it, it spread really fast actually uh, in, in the end uh, about uh, 10 months uh, on it were uh, 2640 cases of measles of which uh, 182 uh, children were hospitalized and uh, one 17 uh, year old old uh, girl died actually uh, from from the measles and one other uh, went into a coma and we still don't know her uh, fate or his fate don't know and uh, well that that was that was it for me basically because I was never vaccinated as a child uh, my parents were against it uh, 
and my siblings weren't uh, vaccinated either. My brother uh, was later vaccinated when he was bitten by a dog on on a holiday in France, and uh, they wa- they wanted to in in that state of emergency they wanted to be sure that he didn't get any bad diseases, and so uh, he was vaccinated on the spot. And he also later got some uh, vaccinations uh, when studying in Wales when and there was an outbreak of a certain disease on the campus. Um, and my sister got uh, her vaccinations, or at least some, when she went on holiday to Nepal. They had their own reason for vaccination, uh, vaccinating uh, later on in their lives. I never had a reason to do so until recently because of the measles uh, outbreak i talked to my parents about it and their arguments were always well vaccinations are not completely safe you know uh, for some people it's not enough and uh, they will still uh, get ill or or die and for others it the vaccination will be so strong that that will make them sick or or, or uh, actually uh, uh, kill them and um, so vaccinations are not to be trusted and my dad this, did his research and concluded, well, uh, let's let's not vaccinate our children. That's that's uh, probably safer, and we can still profit from herd immunity if the rest of uh, us around uh, around our children are fa- are vaccinated. But I learned, uh, especially when I got involved in the skeptic movement, that it doesn't work like that. If if uh, you can still, um, even when you're vaccinated, you can still get ill if you're infected or if you especially if you're not vaccinated uh, you can be exposed to quite some dangers there are still uh, a lot lots of diseases going around uh, even if most of the traditional uh, diseases in the Netherlands have been uh, pretty much extinct and I, I decided eventually that I would uh, would go and get my own shots and they did did uh, respect my decision and they even paid for it that we still disagree about it wow so leon do you think that gsow working on these wikipedia pages for the anti-vax and for the pro-vax people and organizations is going to have any kind of impact or or help out in any way well uh it can help uh, in the same way that any other changes and edits we do can help because when people don't know something about a certain subject or they want to check if their uh, if their ideas about this uh, about them are correct the first thing they will do is google and one of the top results will always be a wikipedia article and uh, so it's important what uh, what people read there uh, even if they know they, they have to take Wikipedia with a grain of salt, some people don't use this out of principle. But it's still the the information that most people read. So it that's the place where we need to be too. That's the place where we need to properly inform them, uh, provide links to uh, reliable sources so they can check them out for themselves. And vaccination is, uh, of course, one of those uh, important topics about which people's beliefs really should be correct because if they're wrong about this it can have bad consequences in real life absolutely totally agree a hundred percent with you okay leon well thank you for joining me today nice talking to you too susan bye bye